I love the country. I mean, I used to hunt and fish and I just hated coming back home. And I'm going, well, why don't you do it the other way? Love going into the city, so you always like going home. And that's why I'm here. So I remember the first night we moved up here, you know, I'm opening the window, and instead of hearing car horns, we were hearing barred owls calling all night long. And I'm going, ah, that works. That works really well. Ultimately, what I'm trying to do is recreate what it feels like out there. You're sitting there on a you know, brisk fall evening, and all of a sudden these geese are calling and come and landing, and it kind of, oh, wow. And so that's what I'm after is the wow. Caddis! Stone deaf. Right now, I'm looking for grouse habitat. I mean, I've got grouse walking around out here, and every now and then I'll flush one. And so it's looking for something that they've been through or they'll, that will blend in with making the painting work. This is the largest undisturbed area in the state of Minnesota. It's never been touched. You can't. It's all floodplain to the rum, and it's all springs and sand back there. You just, you can't do anything to it. So. It's nice, there's all kinds of stuff back there. And, and that's my backyard. Wildlife doesn't really sit still for you. So what I try to do is take the impression and trying to recapture that impression in the painting. And sometimes you hit and sometimes you don't. I was doing finished paintings in seventh grade in high school, copying Richard Bishop calendars or whatever, doing this and that. and, and uh, just it was just I don't know it was just that's what I did you know, there was never any thought process I just wanted to do it and kind of did it always wildlife there was nothing I don't interest in anything else I mean that's I in the fall I hunted in the spring I fished I was also pretty good at math so I applied at the University of Minnesota for the IT program got in and was going to the U to be an engineer and my art teacher found out about it and came to the house literally and said you cannot not go to art school and so I submitted a portfolio to MCAT and got in and when I was in art school, our dean of students was reactivated in the Marine Corps to run, help run the combat art program. Well, he was asking all of us if we wanted to join the Marines and be a combat artist. And that was back when a lot of Marines were getting killed in Vietnam. We went, oh no, no way. Then I got drafted and remembered. And halfway through boot camp, I wrote my mother a letter and going, can you see if you can get in touch with John Rogers? And I got on the program that way. I was there July of 1969 to July of 70, long time ago. We were issued a camera. And, uh, and film and go out and photograph, bring the stuff back, photo lab it, process the work, and we go back to the studio and work. You know, I worked in watercolor, acrylic, a ballpoint pen. I loved working in ballpoint pen. I was selected as Combat Artist of the Year by the Marine Corps Combat Correspondents Association for a painting I did of four Arvins looking in a blown up schoolhouse. Well, I was supposed to be in the schoolhouse the night before. And the guy is going, nah, come on and stay with us. I went and stay with them and they blew it up. So we went the next morning, I'm got, I did a painting of these four guys looking in the window of nothing. You know, it's a grandfather and his grandson. The grandfather was blind and his, he's holding his grandson's hand looking at the schoolhouse from far back and did a painting of that one too. Hard to say about Vietnam, but it was a great experience. I mean, you can't go to your staff sergeant or lieutenant going, I don't feel like working today, I'm an artist. No, you get up and go to work. You go in the studio at 8 o'clock. It was great discipline. So I did almost 100 pieces in, in a year. All of the work I did in Vietnam belongs to the National Museum of, of Marine Corps Art. I think without that experience, I, I don't know if I would be doing what I'm doing. I paint birds. I mean, I've tried to do the other stuff, and, and there's too many people better at it, but I know the anatomy of birds better. I've been handled them, I've cleaned a lot of them, and I, I like birds. My father made me do one thing before I could go hunting, and there was, there was a little pamphlet called The Ducks, Geese, and Swans of North America. Sports Field put it out. But he would not take me hunting until I knew every single duck could identify it. He'd open a page and go, what is this? And I would have to identify it, and I did it. 
but that was important. So you appreciate the markings and the beauty and, and the whole bit, and there, I got caught in it. Every bird has its own characteristics. I mean, canvasbacks act a certain way, redheads act a certain way, widgeon act a certain way, and I've always tried to make sure that that's the correct way and that works. When I got back from Vietnam, I did a painting and entered it in the competition, and uh, so I was working somewhere, and somebody said, hey, you tied for first in the Federal Duck Stamp, and I went, what? And then I got interested in it and did it more and more. I won the Minnesota Duck Stamp in 82, Texas Duck Stamp twice now. Uh, I won the Minnesota Trout Stamp. They'll be around for a while. Hopefully they'll be around longer than I am, and that's, I've been doing what I want for 30 years. I'm already past where I ever thought I could be. So anything from here is, it's, you know, pushing things I haven't seen before. So it's all new, you know, and I love it. Minnesota Original is made possible by the State Arts and Cultural Heritage Fund and the citizens of Minnesota.